The weather hasn't been great lately, so I thought I'd do a, a short tutorial on uh, the tools we use to plan our trips, uh, in particular, you know, relative to the tide. So this will be a relatively short video, and uh, I've got to mow the lawn later this afternoon, so this is definitely not going to be a, a long video, and I don't want to get overly complex in uh, what we discuss. From a macro perspective, uh, you can say that um, time dilation, which is an effect caused by mass, the effect of mass on the space-time continuum, ultimately results in an effect that we refer to as gravity. Uh, in fact, you can see that in gravitational waves as they pass by the Earth. Anyway, that's where the tide comes from. Now, as the moon and the sun uh, are you know, as the Earth spins and those are going around the Earth, it creates um, twice daily tidal cycle. So you've got uh, on the opposite sides of the uh, planet, essentially, you've got uh, tides. They're not exactly six hours apart, but they, they tend to more or less be six hours apart. They vary every day by so many minutes. Anyway, that's where the uh, tides come from. And this is kind of uh, more of a a video about which tools or what tools we actually use uh, for trip planning and uh, some of the detail navigation in order to use the tide rather than fight the tide. Our two primary tools for doing our trip planning are OpenCPN and Current Atlas. The Current Atlas is basically a uh, more detailed uh, view of the specific currents in and around the Pacific Northwest Islands. As you can see from this uh, aerial view, uh, tidal currents enter the Salish Sea through the Strait of Juan de Fuca. They also obviously exit that same way, which means almost all of the tidal flow is to and from that, that region. If you also notice uh, where the, the north and south entrance to the inside of Vancouver Island uh, basically, it's uh, almost no tidal flow in there, which means that the water actually warms up in the summertime and it can, it can reach temperatures of up to 75 degrees, which is pretty high considering the rest of the region never really gets much above 50 degrees. So as you can see, the, uh, when you look at what we've got here, uh, we have some current showing up. This is uh, OpenCPN. Uh, I use OpenCPN to do a lot of my pre-planning. Uh, you can actually go to any of these uh, currents and you can kind of look at uh, over the day what it looks like. You can go day by day and take a look at what the currents are going to be like. Uh, and as you do that, you can kind of get a sense for what the timing is for the currents. Some of these, uh, give me an example. Uh, let's take a look at one that I use a lot when we're leaving uh, Anacortes. Uh, we're heading out of Anacortes and you'll notice we've got a current here that's ebbing right now. And it's ebbing uh, at, you know, basically about uh, three quarters of a knot at the moment. But if we're heading north, you'll notice that we've still got ever so slight flood still heading north. So if we time it just right, we can actually head down Guimis Channel and then up Bellingham Channel and have the current with us both directions. This actually helps a lot when we're trying to make any kind of distance because our sailboat really only travels about, I think we average around five knots. Whether it's under sail or, or motoring, it's about five knots. So if you add one or two knots for the current, uh, five becomes seven, where if you detract that same one or two knots, five becomes three knots. And at three knots, you're not going anywhere fast. It's really look, taking us yeah. right toward that. Look at the current. Yeah, look at that. It is crazy strong right here. I know, it's only going to get worse. That's, this is the part I was telling Debbie and Lewis about that we couldn't avoid. Yeah, I was a little concerned about being this close to the buoy because I'm getting washed right toward it. Yeah. It should have been on the other side. What you can do is if you look at the debris coming off the, yeah. the wake, you parallel it, and that way you don't get drawn towards it. Yeah. That means you have to pull a little off. But uh, a, little a little bit starboard. Starboard, yeah. Yeah, but uh, that's the kind of current we're fighting. Feeling good when we get past that buoy. 
movie. Yeah, it, the current doesn't stop. You just aren't reminded of it constantly. Man, it's crazy. I know. It. Okay, but it's uh, it's in our favor once we get to uh, southern tip of Moresby Island. If we're heading to Victoria, a good example, in fact, right now, we could be heading out of uh, Guimese Channel, uh, out of Anacortes. Here we are right here leaving Anacortes, and we've got a decent ebb. Uh, that same ebb picks up a little bit as we head down uh, past Shannon Point and the uh, western tip of, this is uh, Fidalgo Island here. You'll notice at the same time, you have no current in the middle of Rosario right here. This is Rosario Strait. So you want to, it kind of tells you where you want to head and when you want to head there. And you'll notice, uh, even though you've got a decent current here, two hours after leaving Anacortes, you'll notice you still have a bit of a current against you right here. The good news is uh, that goes from a slight flood to a significant ebb after a couple of hours. So what you're doing is you really uh, timing the ebb going from Anacortes as you come out Guimese Channel, uh, sail down Rosario Strait, and finally enter uh, the Strait of Juan de Fuca. And once you're in the Strait of Juan de Fuca, you'll notice that you then have pretty much consistent uh, one and a half knot current that's going to help you all the way out to Victoria. That's, uh, that's really the the easiest way to navigate these waters is to make sure that you're using the currents uh, because again you go with a current you're doing seven knots you go against the current you're doing three knots so it it really makes a world of difference using the currents and a 25 knot wind we managed to make the 37 mile trip from Victoria to Anacortes on a flood in four hours and eight minutes, which is pretty decent time. I'd recommend hanging on. Six point seven knots is not bad. Band of fog out there. I guess you might say we're shooting for a record coming back from Victoria here in some good wind. You want to kind of keep this pointed south if you can a little bit more. You want me to do that? Uh, you don't like going south? South is what caused the problem. Yeah. I know. This is where we need to be right here. This is the point of six. We're going six miles or six knots. You don't mind you getting sucked up narrow straight though? Yeah. But we're not going there. <laughs> we can correct later. <laughs> okay. Whatever you say. That sounds good to me. We do want to kind of see the arrow up there. We want to keep that arrow out of that little V in the back. So we have to keep going south a little more. and you correct a little bit point north of the way comes into the boat. As long as they don't get a sunburn. Ah, oh, sweet. 
Anyway, there you go. You got her. Beautiful. My helmswoman. Picture of concentration. Yeah. She'll never let anybody see it because she's wearing our ugly hat. <laughs> The other major tool we use for calculating currents and current direction is called Current Atlas. You'll notice here, like I was mentioning earlier, OpenCPN also shows this, but we have uh, Guimi's channel ebbing, and at the same time, you'll notice that Bellingham channel is flooding. Um, you get to the top of Bellingham, you're flooding at the top, but you'll notice you've got an ebb immediately north of Orcas Island. Now, what that basically does is it, it provides a direct bi-directional travel. So if you go to the north of uh, Clark and Barnes Island, uh, you're, you're heading basically northwest. If you go to the south of those islands, the current's running southeast. Uh, this, this occurs for probably a couple of hours during each of the cycles. So as long as you know exactly where your currents are running, you can really add a lot of speed to your travel. Uh, another area that is uh, particularly frustrating <laughs> is you'll notice that uh, there is, uh, as an example, whoops, as an example, you've got a counterclockwise current uh, in Harrow Strait, which is between Vancouver Island and San Juan Island. Uh, the Discovery Islands, which are just you know due east of uh, the peninsula where Victoria is located, the Discovery Islands kind of uh, tend to run southward at a high, high ebb speed. Sometimes that's running four and a half, five knots. Uh, another thing, though, that you'll notice we've got a current running against Trial Island. That's due south of Victoria there, and Trial Island is particularly. Uh, bothersome because as you're running, as you're ebbing, uh, let me see if I can get a better view of it here. And by the way, this, uh, this application, which is basically the current atlas, uh, will show on any, any Android device, any, I think it's just Android right now. Anyway, it's on any Android device. But you'll notice that right now you've got a mix of um, these current arrows show the direction. You've got a mix of an ebb and a flood. But as, as the uh, day progresses, you'll, you'll notice we've got now a pretty significant ebb, which is running to the west and out into the Pacific out of uh, Strait of Juan de Fuca. At the same time, uh, you've got the correct movement past Trial Island. But if you'll notice, Trial Island, that's that small dot just south of Victoria, if we keep running, you'll notice Trial Island, uh, it actually, even though you've got an ebb and you're ebbing out uh, straight to Juan de Fuca, you'll notice if you get too close to Trial Island, you pick up a significant flood. In other words, there's a counter current in there running clockwise. Uh, we have actually been stuck there for several hours because we came out with the flood and we were basically too far north in the Strait of Juan de Fuca and we were stuck in that countercurrent going by Trial Island. Little things like that really make a difference in how long it takes to get places. <laughs> no. Anyway, this is Trial Island and uh, as I was mentioning to share a minute ago, um, Trip ever. Longest trip ever to Victoria. Should have registered with Guinness. Um, we've been sitting here just off trial for about four, four and a half hours now this morning. Um, GPS claims we're making almost one knot, but uh, I guess one knot's not all that fast. Uh, currents against us. Also, another, another reason that I use this uh, app all the time is you'll find that, uh, well, here's an example. Uh, this is an area called, just between Orcas and, uh, and Lopez, we've got um, a pass. It's called uh, Pole Pass. And Pole Pass is only about, they're showing a little wider than it is there, but it's only about you know, 100 feet wide, if that. But running pole pass, you'll notice that if you don't 
hit pole pass at the right time, um, you've really got an issue with that current. Once you get through pole pass, as an example, we tend to run um, over to Sydney Spit, which is off, off Vancouver Island. And to get to Sydney Spit, uh, we run through Pole Pass. We have to time it, though, so that we can get through on the north end of San Juan Island between Spiden Island and San Juan Island, we have Spiden Channel. Spiden Channel can run four and a half to five knots. So what we do is we make sure that we have an ebb. Uh, here's, here's what it looks like at the top. Let me go back a little. So here's, here's the ebb at Spiden. And you'll notice that we've got the ebb and we've got the also the uh, ebb, actually the flood running is still through Pole Pass. And this is where you have to time it because you've got about an hour between Pole Pass and Spiden. So you want to make sure that you go through Pole Pass while you have the current. And this is as an example at uh, 934. 1031, you, you still have the current with you going through Spiden. And by 1128, you're already across uh, the top north end of Harrow Strait. And you're actually running back toward, uh, toward Sydney Spit by that time. So it really works out nicely, but you have to watch the currents pretty closely. I tend to religiously check the currents and look for the, the optimum time. And believe it or not, because these distances are, uh, are kind of uh, well known, we try and time our coming and going uh, within about a five to 10 minute window. And if you keep that five to 10 minute window, uh, you really don't have too much uh, trouble getting places. You'll notice up in the Canadian islands, again, you've got a uh, counter current up here. You've got a, uh, uh, the, the water uh, travels a little faster coming out through President Channel. And as a result, it tends to have a little higher speed one other thing we do is, uh, yeah, I guess like most boaters, if you're traveling against the current, you try and stay to the, uh, to the side of the channel or the strait. If you're traveling with the current, you can travel in the center. Anyway, this is uh, kind of a quick overview of how we use this program.